Nothing's really lining up perfect, but I plan on doing some gap filling later. I'll put a plate on this side just to fill that in. Um, but I'm making this so that the dash, the original dash can lift off like a top piece and nothing's attached to it. Even the gauge cluster is, has its own floating mount here. Or not floating, but uh, it's a mounted independent or it's mounted separately of the dash, so I could just lift this off without worrying about disconnecting wires. And I can access everything and work on wiring or anything in the future. Um, I need to trim a little corner here, because I want this to be able to lift off easy. Right now it's gonna, gonna kind of drag on that corner when I lift off the dash. It'll make a little sliver. Um, I might actually bend, do a little bending, but just want to get it to where everything's mounted and installed and then we can finesse everything later. Probably also do some paneling or something over there, but this is uh this is good though. I like this. I like how that turned out. Got a place for the gauge cluster, spot for other things. Probably mount the switches up in here somewhere, but I kind of like this, so. Again, we'll mess with things later. Right now we're just kind of doing a rough cut, just kind of getting everything installed, just getting this to where it can function. Might have to do something different for the speedometer. This uh, speedometer cable is already exactly the length it needed to be to reach the gauge cluster and now it's a little higher and a little forward and this just doesn't feel like it's gonna have enough length so I might just get like a digital speedometer I'll look and see if there's an option for getting a longer cable because I'd like to keep my original odometer running I haven't quite reached a hundred thousand yet but I've been Somewhat looking forward to seeing that roll over to 100,000, so I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, um...
Decided to bring my tools inside and just deal with the rain. It's uh, gonna help a lot with getting this thing done. Just, just not worrying about this thing rusting anymore. Actually, it'll probably help wash off all that W40, hopefully. Okay, got that braced up pretty good. Run a couple more strips to make things good and solid. I'll clean up these welds. I'm gonna finish welding on the back so there's no gap. Probably doesn't matter too much, but. Do a little grinding, Let's clean up some of these welds, and throw a few more on, and get this cut out. That cut uh, those quarters pretty well. I thought I was gonna have to get out the plasma cutter. Sweet. I got things pretty solid. I like it. That worked out good. Thought I was gonna put some strips on the side, but that's I don't think I need to. Very nice. Let's do it pretty straight. better. Now I can push on this and drill holes and not have to worry about bending things and just keep things a lot more solid, stiff.
Okay, I went and found the connections for the gauge cluster, turn signals, um, oil pressure. Yeah, oil pressure. Connections right there, and probably a light. Backlighting. Um, high beam indicator, backlight, backlight. Um, or actually, this is a backlight. This is the parking brake. So I'll go through these, find a power source, light these up, and get them labeled. I also pulled out the steering column connection. I'll need to also go through that and hook that back up so I can use the turn signal lever. I'm unwrapping this bundle of wires and I don't know if you guys, one of you might know what this is called, but there's no stickiness on it. And I can't unwrap it. It's like it's fused itself together, but it's really nice. I like that it's not sticky like electrical tape, would, which would be leaving a whole bunch of nasty residue behind. So you can see it's wrapped, but it's, yeah, it doesn't unwrap. I gotta, I'm having to cut it. So anyway, somebody let me know if you know what this is called. Okay, got everything separated so it's easier to figure out what does what. Turn signals, oil pressure, separate connector for oil pressure, and then uh, gonna have like battery voltage and coolant temperature all up in this connection here. So I need to go through, I also need to figure out which ones are ground. Okay, that was a little confusing getting these gauges figured out. There's three connections on them and uh, I figured these were all common positives, but when I connected them and connected ground They all pegged to full and it took me a little while to figure out that The gauges take power they peg to full, but then their signal wire is what brings the needle back down so if we attach all the positives the gauges jump up, but then we take the sensor wire or the signal wire, like coolant temp, and that goes to ground, usually through the uh, sensor, so that will vary the resistance going to the meter, and uh, that's how you get your readout. Right turn, fuel. We got uh, coolant um, got here. oil pressure. Yeah, so everything, all the gauges take power. Voltmeter that just connects to positive, and this is the ground for it. This actually grounds the whole case, as well as all the sensors. And yeah, that was, yeah, it kind of confused me a little bit, but got it figured out. Okay, so all these will go to a positive connection, or a switched positive connection. These are all the grounds, or negatives. Got some positives over here, like for turn signals, the backlight, um, sensor wires for fuel. Uh, backlight positive. I probably should mark that on there. Parking light. That's actually a negative. It's got a common positive connection through that terminal. High beams. That's a positive connection. Coolant temp goes to the coolant sensor, which is also a connection connects to negative through the engine block. Okay, got that all figured out. Now I can zip tie these wires up. For the second time, I had them all nice and neat and looking good. I thought I had it right the first time, but then I connected power. But yeah, I just was misunderstanding what was going on here. So the, the gauges need to be supplied with power, and then they have a signal wire. All right, back the way I had it. I figured I had everything hooked up right, but when I attached power, all the gauges were moving at the same time, and I was like, whoa, that seems kind of weird, but yeah, that's normal. So I got grounds. Switch to positive, and all our input wires.
mount. Got a spot for my gauge cluster. That looks, I like it. That works for me. Might wrap this in something later on, maybe like carpet or some kind of material. I'll put that off right now though. I'll probably end up painting it first. Look forward to painting this. I like to put some kind of retro themed colors on there. Or maybe just like a Winnebago brown, Winnebago tan. Got the wiring on this all sorted out. Got positive, negative. This so means it needs to be switched to positive. Input wires. does look like the speedometer cable will reach. Got plenty of room actually. Maybe that's just because I rerouted that through a different spot. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, that works for me. That is great. That is so awesome to see that back in there. <laughs> Wanna drive it. I'll drive it right now. Got a little more wiring to do. I hook up the turn signals, headlights, uh, all these. You know, I need to connect up the gauge. Need to mount it. But that is freaking awesome to see that in there. Tail lights, I need to run a big old length of wire back for the tail lights. I did some sorting on the old wiring harness, stripped it down, separated all the wires, which was actually a lot of fun. Um, untaping the wire loom and then pulling out all the wire, separating the wire. Um, there, there, there's a long lengths of you know, like a bundle of a bundle of about that much wire and then there'd be another separate length you know bundle of lengths that's uh, like 10 feet shorter so I separated those all out and everything's all looking actually pretty clean and decent I'm gonna save all that wire loom as well all the cheap junk I keep getting just melts when it gets anywhere near a heat source and it's really frustrating so 30 year old wire loom still out does the brand new cheap crap so I'll be saving that too Got a whole bunch of uh, things like tw uh, probably maybe like 14 gauge. Got some 12 gauge right there. Got a little bit of 10 gauge. Just some black 10 gauge. Bunch of green. All sorts of colors. This is a crap ton of money. If I had to go buy this wire, um, it would be a lot of money. And I need um, I need quite a bit for the headlights and quite a bit more to reach back to the taillights. So that's a huge money saver going through all that. Oh, I can't wait to get this done. This is awesome. I've made a lot of progress. It helped a lot bringing the welder inside here and just dealing with the rain and not worrying about the rust anymore. So next up, we're gonna wire up that gauge cluster and hook up the brake lights, park lights, headlights, turn signals. I need to add a little button for a kick for a kick down button. It's like a downshift if I'm getting on the freeway or something. I heard a lot of hot rodders will just add a button, so I kind of like that idea. I'm gonna just add a button instead of trying to put a switch back on the pedal. Though I do think I have that somewhere. I took it off thinking it was for the cruise control for some reason. Um, I never heard of a kick down, a wire to kick down function for the transmission. I'm used to a kick down cable. So when I saw a little switch on the uh, back in here, I took it out because I knew the cruise control was bad. But nope, that was apparently for downshifting when you floor it. So I'll just add a button. Yeah, I got a lot more wiring to do, but. Boy, I got the biggest part done, which was establishing where all the relays were going, the fuse block, 
Got the dash done. Got that nice and solid. Really happy with how that turned out. Could do a little more finessing with, you know, some little pieces. Trim that out a little more, but I'm, you know, we're not worried about that right now. When I'm out on the road, or maybe when I get to a, a place in Arizona. Really looking forward to getting those five acres out there. I hope that works out. And uh, then we can work on it some more there. But yeah, we'll just deal with that for right now. I'm not worried about it. I love that the dash can just lift off. And you can see everything from above. All the wiring, all the connections. If there's any repairs in the future, it'll be really easy to, to work on things. Uh, we'll do the same thing with the vents. If I add some heating vents back in there. Those will also not be mounted to the top dash piece. They'll just kind of float underneath it. Um, and I might not even do that. I might just put some, you know, some of those, couple of those 12 volt fans that you usually see in buses, have those for drying out the window and then get me a small universal heater core, which doesn't really have any ducting on it. It's just a, just kind of looks like a space heater. So you can warm things up, get some air blowing on the windows and I think I can defrost that way. Need to go through these connections and get my turn signals hooked back up. Uh, one couple of those connections are going to be the horn. Lots coming up, everybody. Stay tuned.